Good morning, everyone, and welcome to you from St. George's Anglican Church in Guelph. Uh, on this second Sunday in the Epiphany season, we've gone back to green, so another way of thinking about this is ordinary time. And I like to think about it right now as ordinary time in extraordinary days, because we are still in extraordinary days for all of us. So welcome here. As I said, my name is Ray Black, and I serve as the rector. Um, here at St. George's, Laura Keller is doing the videography, and Tony Atia, our sexton, is here as well at this service. I want to also thank Craig Lucock for taking services last Sunday. Um, many of you know that my father-in-law died on um, January 6th, which is the Feast of the Epiphany in our tradition. It's Christmas Eve in the Orthodox tradition in which he was born into, and so it was good to be able to have a week off, so I appreciate that he that. But it's also good to be back in the church and know that I'm connecting with you in the ways that we can during these pandemic times. We wish to acknowledge that we meet on land that at the time of contact was held by the Attawadaran as an area of trade and ceremony by the two rivers. At various times the land was occupied by both the Haudenosaunee from the south and the Anishinaabe from the north. In more recent times the Huron Treaty gave rights to the Mississaugas of new credit. May we who dwell on or visit this land also be good stewards and honor those who came before us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with me. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And let us pray together the college appointed for this day. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The refrain for the psalm appointed this morning, portions of Psalm 139, is Your works are wonderful, O Lord. Your works are wonderful, O Lord. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. Your works are wonderful, O Lord. You press upon me behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Your works are wonderful, O Lord. For you yourself created my innermost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. Your works are wonderful, O Lord. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. Your works are wonderful. How deep I find your thoughts, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, they would be more in number. 
somber and the sand to count them all, my lifespan would be to be like yours. Your works are wonderful, O Lord. Again, the Lord be with you and also with me. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law, about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, I speak to you in the name of the one who is for us our hope and salvation, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I get uh, daily meditations uh, from Richard Rohr, and during this past week they've been centering on story, the need to tell the new story, um, that Jesus was all about telling a radically new story into the world. Story is so very important for us to understand because it shapes who we are and shapes where we go and shapes things that will yet come. But narratives can be distorted depending on your perspective and how you see things. The Old Testament lesson, which we didn't have today, was the call of Samuel, God speaking to him in the night, and Samuel kept running to Eli, thinking Eli was the one calling him, until finally Eli figured it out. It was God. So the narrative begins as Samuel thinking it's Eli, but Eli knowing it's not him. Finally, they realize it's God calling. Here in the Gospel reading, we have a narrative from Nathaniel's point of view. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? There's a joke here, and there's almost a a wonderful twist on the joke because the humor comes back right away at Nathaniel from Jesus when Jesus says, here's someone in whom there is no deceit. And Nathaniel says, how did you know me? And Jesus said, I saw you. I saw you. Before Philip called, I saw you under the fig tree. And immediately Nathaniel goes, you saw me under the fig tree, you must be the son of God. And I don't know, sometimes we read scripture with too serious a vein. There is some humor in scripture, and we need to engage that. But there's also different perspectives on the story. The narrative of Jesus is that in God, Jesus knew Nathanael to the core of his heart. The story for Nathanael is almost superficial to that, that that because he discovered that Jesus knew something about him and there is no way that Jesus should know something about him, then he must be connected to being the Son of God. Different perspectives, different ways of looking at things. I've told you before, but I'll tell you again, when I lived in Tacoma in Washington, just south of Seattle, the uh, Mount Rainier was there, and the perspective on that is very different depending which ways you look at it. If you look at it from Seattle, it's a beautiful conical shaped volcano. If you look at it down further from Tacoma, you start to see that there's a little bit of an extra peak on the back of it. And if you look at it from down towards Portland, it looks even more different. So if you only had one perspective on the mountain, if you always saw it from Seattle, you always saw it from Portland, or you always saw it from Tacoma, 
you wouldn't think you're describing the same mountain if you heard others describing it from their angle or their perspective. So narratives, narratives need to be checked out. We need to see how we place ourselves into the story and what story we are telling. We need to see how we tell the story of Jesus, which is radical and new because it, 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 it confronts everything of the human narrative of domination and power and amassing wealth and doing all those things which are really destructive to building community. We see that in our day and age, and I know many of us are deep in prayer about the events of our time. So think about the narrative. Think about what we're truly trying to say. Think about what we're trying to accomplish. If you have a narrative that says the Christian faith is about personal salvation and getting your ticket to heaven, you're going to live your whole life about claiming your redemption and your forgiveness and seeing everybody else as sinners and, and, and wrong. If you see it about building the kingdom of God now, you're going to do everything in your power to start building those things that we see of God about transforming our structures, about transforming our way of being, about saying we can't, we can't leave people to be warehoused into long-term care like we're doing now. We need to show dignity and care to those who serve them. Those are examples we all know because they're in the news. To build the domain of God is to engage in the narrative of Jesus, which is transformational, which is about replacing power structures with love structures. There's a great quote attributed to George Bernard Shaw where he says, and I may get this a little bit wrong, he says, Christianity sounds like a good idea if anyone would actually try it. Christianity sounds like a good idea if anyone would try it. And I think that's a challenge because we so often talk about Christianity when we're called to live our faith. We're still called to live that new story of hope for Jesus' sake, the one he brought for our sake. We're still called to live into a narrative that we've never fully tried. The church, just like everything else, gets seduced back into the narrative that has been the one of the world for so long, about power, about authority, about the things that, that the world sees as great, amassing fortunes and influence. Whereas Jesus was about challenging those things and setting up the poorest and lifting up those who are marginalized and building communities that were whole, where things are shared, where there is caring and love at the root and the core. So as we go into ordinary time and extraordinary days, let us not forget about the story we're called into and let us dare to live it, not hope for it, but to live into it and make it so with the one who is our salvation and our hope. Amen. join our voices with the voices of our forebears, as together we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made one, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. 
and I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Dear friends in Christ, God invites us to hold the needs of our sisters and brothers as dear to us as our own needs, loving our neighbors as ourselves. Let us offer our thanksgivings and our petitions on behalf of the Church and the world. And in this day, let us continue to pray as we keep passing milestone upon milestone for those who are working to alleviate this pandemic of COVID-19, for those who are suffering, for the millions now who have died, and for the many millions who are ill. Let us pray for the governments of the world. Let us pray that we would seek new ways to see ourselves, to see our resources, to see our responsibilities, to see our care for this whole planet. Let us pray for this gift of this earth that God has given to us, that we would cherish it and use it wisely. Let us pray for those places that are going through political transformations and changes, our neighbor to the south in particular, and the influences that the power nations have over so many others. Let us pray for justice, equity, truth, and caring. And let us pray for the work of the church throughout the world, particularly in our worldwide Anglican communion, remembering the Anglican Church of Australia and its many ministries. Here in the Anglican Church of Canada, we continue to pray for our leaders, Linda, our primate, Mark, our national indigenous archbishop, Anne, our metropolitan archbishop, and within our diocese for Bishop Susan and the people of St. John's Church in Ancaster and their ministries and outreach into the community. Praying through the cycle of all the people on our list that we have in uh, made intention to do during this time, we continue today and remember these households and persons. And we pray God's blessing and peace upon them. Andrew and Sarah Goody, Clara, Lucas, and Benjamin, Ian Gower, Michelle Granger-Smith, Connor and Shaylin, Joan Granger, Mark and Judy Granger, Janet Gray, Ellen and Rita Green, Sonia Green, Mark and Lorraine Greenham and Hudson, Esther Gregory, Shirley Griffin, Hayden, Shastin, and Elena, and Elizabeth Gullett. We pray as well for those we know who need prayers for healing and prayers for special needs, remembering Michael who is in hospital and praying for the needs of Ron, Trevor, Ray, Kate, Paul and Sarah, Donna and John, Betty, Ned, Bill and Marilyn, Jim, Vivian, Dave, Andy, Dorothy, Elizabeth, and any others that you may wish to name now before God. Let us take a moment as well to remember the blessings of our lives. The loved ones that we know, the people we know who care about us and the ones that we care about. The resources that we have to weather the storms of our time. We offer all these prayers and thanksgivings to our God of power. And through the ministry of your Son, O God, we ask that you free us from the grip of the tomb, that we may desire you as the fullness of life and proclaim your saving deeds and love to all the world. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in God's holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness 
which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Dear friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And I invite you to greet one another in a non-touch across the airwaves way. Peace be with you. sentences from Psalm 96, verse 8. Give unto the Lord the honor due unto his name, bring an offering, and come into his courts. Living God, you have received your Son as the Messiah, revealed your Son as the Messiah. May we hear his word and follow it, and live as children of light. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. The Lord be with you, and also with me. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, Creator and Preserver of all things. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is the one that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these, thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, 
he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee, in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant, that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father, almighty, world without end. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs unto thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. I invite those of you who are watching from home to now receive spiritual communion with us. And in receiving spiritual communion, we are knit together in the sacraments, in the very presence of Christ in our lives. And there's a prayer that we have posted for you to use, and I will just say it with you now. I don't always, but I will today. Come, Lord Jesus, and make in my heart your dwelling place and home. I seek to love you with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength, and so through your presence in bread and wine, I receive you afresh and praise you, for you are my God. As you fill me, so may my love for you and for all your people rise and overflow, that with joy and thanksgiving I may serve you in the world you love. Let us continue with the prayer our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever.
God of glory, you nourish us with bread from heaven. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us your light may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. The blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and those you love this day and always. Amen. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.